Hey y'all, I'm James Hudson, and this is Starting Roll, where we sit down with some of the most inspirational people to talk about how board games have changed their lives. Let me introduce you to today's guest. Hey, it's Rob Dimboy. Hey, how's it going, from James? Cyanide Happiness. I am. You draw all the stick people. I, we've been ruining the internet for over a decade. <laughs> yes, and I love it, and I love you for it. You did an awesome, insanely popular card game a few years back. We did, it's called Joking Hazard. It's very adult and very jokey. <laughs> it's in the name, but Joking you, Hazard. But you're also doing a lot of other things as well. Yes, we do animation, we do a comic every day, and we have since 2004. We do a lot of stuff. Half the stuff on the internet is probably ours. Well, also today, you brought a game that was kind of helped shape your fandom, your nerddom, your board game-isms, as I we did. call them. It was the board game that got me into board games from a young age, and it's uh, Boggle. Boggle, I don't yeah. know anything about Boggle. It's classic. Can you go show me something about it? Let's check it out. Cool. So Rob, you've been doing the comics thing for quite a while. What yes. was the last job you even had before doing comics? Uh, before doing comics, the last job I had was, I was a summer camp counselor when I was 16. That's that's how far back this goes. Wow. <laughs> this all took off when I was in college. So like, was it 2004, 2005? Uh, right about then, yeah. Okay. I, was, I started doing animation in high school. I just didn't have any friends, so I downloaded the Flash and taught myself how to animate. Um, and that's how I got into this whole internet thing. How long have you been like drawing comics or doing comics? I've been drawing comics like just on paper since I was probably 11 or 12 years old. Oh wow! I would draw, I would draw little cartoons in the margins. I would draw like these Far Side inspired comic strips, and I would try to get my school newspaper to print them, and they would say, "No, <laughs> <laughs> this is, is kind of messed up." And now you get to go point at Mr. Banks and be like. Oh, exactly. I, I skipped the, the, the middle school newspaper and now I'm on the internet, which is, you know, a much bigger audience. So. Al Gore, so proud of you. Exactly. Right? <laughs> so what would you say is, like, did you, did you always know that you were going to make comics and is that what you always felt drawn to do? Yes. I grew up reading, like, newspaper comics every day, start to finish, like, top left to bottom right, like, Family Circus, all the way down to Gasoline Alley. Like, I just digested every comic in the newspaper. Calvin and Hobbes. Calvin and Hobbes, The Far oh, wow. Side, even Garfield from time to time. Sure. Like, I got crazy, you know? <laughs> Garfield in his lasagna. Yeah, he, he loves that lasagna. He does. Almost as much as he hates Mondays. But. How much do you feel like that influenced kind of where you're at now as far as making, well, I mean, you're making comics, but do you have that, does it kind of drive you on some of the see, comics it, you do now? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a cartoonist, but at the time, I didn't know that I would be doing what I'm doing now because that job didn't exist yet. Like, sure. there was no internet, there was no Facebook, there was, there was nothing like that. So I thought, like, my dream job would be to, you know, get a portfolio, make some comics, impress a bunch of executives at a syndicate, you know, right. get a deal, <laughs> make some newspaper comics. But all that went away before I even, like, graduated college, so I kind of, had to invent my own job, which sure. a lot of my friends have done too. Well, what was the, the the thing that really, like you knew though, this is gonna be a thing, like I'm so gonna be able to do this. We started making the comics in 2004, 2005, and um, it wasn't until about 2007 that we started making ad revenue like whatsoever. It was like 50 bucks a month or maybe 200 bucks a month. It, it wasn't much, but for the first two years of the comics, we were just doing it to entertain ourselves. We were just, we had all these jokes in our heads and we were like, it's fun to make people laugh. So even though no one's reading it, let's just do it. Yeah, that's interesting. So like, how did how did Boggle work its way into this whole situation? So this game is very near and dear to me. This is probably the first tabletop game I remember playing. Okay. Um, our family would always play it on holidays, uh, on vacations, and airplanes, on camping trips. We would always bring Boggle because it's the, it's the simplest game. And it's it's easy. It's an easy way to entertain some kids and keep them from fighting each other. So we would always bring out Boggle. Like whether if the power went out, we would play Boggle. Like if we were stuck in a plane for eight hours, Boggle sure. every time. Yeah, you don't need a whole lot to really pull this game. It's off, so right? simple. Yeah, this is it. Like it's probably the smallest game you've had on, on the show so far. It's just this, and there's also a little like hourglass timer that I lost years ago. So now I just use my phone timer. Sure. But the basics are there. It's just. Find as many words as you can in one minute. Whoever finds the most words that no one else found gets points. The more points you get, you win. It's super easy. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, a, it's word games, right? Word games have yeah. that kind of effect where you don't need a lot of components or miniatures and things like that. Mm -hmm. You just need some letters and, but you feel like, I mean, how many, how many times do you think you've played this game? Uh, thousands, yeah, thousands, so many times. And it still feels new every time because the, the, oh, the letters. It always is new, yeah. The yeah. challenge is always different. Like I'm looking at it right now. Uh, and you said the letters have to be connected, Well, first, right? first we gotta shake it up. Okay. It's also the loudest game ever made. So, okay. that's a warning. Which kids love, <laughs> kids love that. <laughs> All right, the loud part's over. Now we just flatten them out. But yeah, any, any letters that connect uh, horizontally or yeah. diagonally can form words. So you have you can go this way, go around, like, you know, like just looking at this, you got yes, uh, 
Wow, this is actually not an yeah, easy it's one. Pretty, pretty tough. I'm looking. I'm like, cheese. Oh, 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 it was almost cheese. It was, it was cheese if you're just dyslexic. Oh yeah, yeah, I am. So cheese. Hakeez. Yeah. Hakeez. <laughs> yeah, cheese would be a great I'm one. Just, I'm just gonna just, like drive it around in a circle. So. <laughs> if no one's looking, you can just you know. Hey, there we go. Cheese. I mean, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. <laughs> But yeah, uh, the game is super simple. It's as complex as as you are smart, I guess. If you're, I'm not that good at this, but people can find like seven letter words, eight letter words. But the, the trick is plurals. If you can find an S and you can connect to it in many different ways, that's how you rack up right. points. Because right. you can use one word and do it twice. It's it's almost like cheating. It feels like, but it's perfectly legal. <laughs> yeah, no, I dig that. What would you say is like? Any like I know you said you talked about airplanes and camping trips. Is there any like a uh, recent memories where you've played this? Oh yeah, like it came up like uh, two weeks ago, a storm hit and our power went out and it started to get dark. All the neighborhood lights were out. There was literally nothing to do. We had candles up around the house. So when the, when the sun went down, like my wife and I just looked at each other and we were like, where's Boggle? We just dug around the closet till we found it. We shook it up, put some candles around, and we spent like two hours playing Boggle because it's just seance. Yeah, seance. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we summoned the the, the Boggle ghosts. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's the simplest game. It's entertaining, and you don't need a lot. You just sure. you can fit it in a bag. You can just do it, take it anywhere. It's that, great. Did it bringing it back out again? Did it like check all those nostalgia boxes for you? Oh yeah. It, it also brought back you know old arguments like do plurals count as another point or not? <laughs> or right. Is it is it one point or two points for four letter words? Like nice. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies. And you, you've made your own game, Joking Hazard. We have. How Do you think Boggle helped in any way form that love of board games and carrying that over? Maybe in some weirder, like a couple of neurons you know, wired differently that made yeah. me think board games when I, was, sure. when I was 30. But honestly, Joking Hazard, that's a totally different story. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. I, I never sat down and thought, I want to make a tabletop game. It, it happened kind of by accident almost. Okay. We, we made this thing, on our, like, like as you know, we've been doing comics for like 15 years. Um, we decided in 2014 to make this thing on our website called the Random Comic Generator. Mm -hmm. And what it was, was like we had three panels, and each of these panels had about 200 options that we made ahead of time, like 200 panel ones, 200 panel twos, like setups and jokes and punchlines and stuff. And we just made this, this section on our site where people could hit a big orange button and make a new comic every time. There were like 20 million combinations. So like this thing became, Hugely popular. Like it got more hits than the comics did. Like this, this <laughs> random, <laughs> like algorithm was funnier than we were. It was sure. making it was making comics that we wish we'd thought of. Uh, and within like days, we looked at this thing and realized, wait, there's three panels. It's all kind of random. Like we should print this out and see if it's a card game because it feels like if it's this funny right. on, online. Yeah. Like imagine how funny it could be if you were controlling the outcomes. You were putting you know different panels in different places. Right. So literally like a week after we made the random comic generator, we just printed them all out. We shuffled them. We had no rules in mind. We just sat out on a table and thought, okay, what is this? What could this be? Sure. And it became like pretty apparent that it was funny. Like it was yeah. it was hitting more often than it was missing. And from that point, we were, it was just testing. It was just play testing and editing down the cards to the to the funniest ones. Yeah. But what I love about Joking Hazard is that it's that moment of like, you've got the two out there, and it can just be the most random thing that somebody mm. puts down. And those, they're just hilarious, mm. you know? And it's great too, because it's a great game for, uh, you can you can be as adult with it as you want, mm -hmm. right? Because you choose what you're putting down. Oh yeah. And then also it's like, you can explain that game to somebody in literally 10 seconds. Just pick something and put it down. Oh, totally. And if the comic is like super offensive, that's your fault. It's not mine right. like, for making the game. You made the comic. It's your fault, kids. <laughs> and we do get some complaints sometimes where someone sees a joking hazard combo that we've, we've shared and they're like, I can't, I can't believe you made this game. This is terrible. And I'm like, hey, don't address your complaints to the player. They made the comic. Right. We just gave them the tools. Yeah, yeah. And but, but that's, you know, that's that's what's fun about most board games anyways, the agency. The oh, fun, yeah. Right? That, Especially in a party game. Oh, totally. Party games, they're, it's all about making the players funny. It's not about the content. It's about the people it's, and making make, making each other laugh. I'm a big, I was a big class clown, mm -hmm. you know, uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> but there's something about making other people laugh. Yes. That is like a dopamine that's very different than a lot of other things. Oh, absolutely. That's been my job for a decade and a half and it never gets old. And uh, yeah, the thing about Joking Hazard is it lets anyone 
have that feeling of like, that excitement of having the perfect card and playing it face down and then waiting for it to be read and then seeing everyone just lose their minds. Yeah. Like, that's what the game's about. And at this point, millions and millions of people have probably had that moment because Joking Hazard's pretty popular with the kids. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully so, not kids too young. Does that, well, it's, it's up <laughs> to the parents, right? Right. So how does, does that feel like? You feel like a feather in the hat there. You get a lot of fulfillment from having a game that you know has brought a lot of laughs to people. Absolutely. Like that's that's been my job is making people laugh and like let, seeing our fans send us photos of them playing Joking Hazard sure. and making me laugh my ass off. Like it feels like it's come full circle. Like I'm, I'm laughing at jokes that our fans are creating with our characters in our game. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling also as a content creator, obviously. Totally. We're, we're creating some content here. It feels good when people engage with the thing and yeah. kind of jive on the thing that you're making. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you do a lot of that, right? Because it's obviously, you, you make web comics, you do, you have seasons of this. I mean, you have like an actual show. On. Yeah, we have a, a, we have a bi-weekly YouTube series and we have a full on like 11 minute show that we do over on Verve. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff. We've, we've grown as a company since we were just a few guys making cartoons in our underwear. Like now we have, <laughs> we have a, an entire office and we have animators. It's, it's, um, yeah, it's a lot more organized and we, we do a lot more stuff than we did, but it's still right. fundamentally the same. We just sit in a room, we tell jokes until something sticks, and then we just go down the rabbit hole until we have a, an idea for a cartoon. Yeah, I was gonna ask what, what kind of like keeps things, A, keep you from burning out, like as a content creator? What keeps you fresh and driving with new ideas and, and just to create content? I think what keeps us motivated is always never settling for one way of doing things. Never, okay. it involves getting outside of our heads. Sometimes like traveling, doing a retreat, meeting up. Like my, one of my business partners is in Fort Collins, so I'll go over there. And we'll just we'll just drink beer and, and, and talk until some some new ideas come out. Sure. And it also comes from the people that we've brought on over the years. Like we've we, we'll hire people to do specific things like like directing or animation, but then we'll discover that these people are hysterical. Like they've got all these ideas of their own, and they have these these fresh perspectives that can like take the stuff that we're writing to a different level or in a different direction. So I think um, it's all about kind of changing up like our collaborators and just the ways that we write and never doing it the same way twice. Sure. Have you ever had like a funk that you just like, like a batting slump, you know, like a baseball player, you know, have you had any of those slumps? How did, oh. you, how did you get yourself out of the slump? All the time. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's never the same cause. It's, it, the, it, writer's block is weird because it, it never, it's, it's never the same um, thing twice and it's okay. never the same solution. So sometimes it just involves taking a walk around the block. Sometimes it means just hopping on Skype and just Brainstorming with one of my one of my co-writers, sure. but I think it was Brad Bird, the director from Pixar, mm -hmm. who did The Incredibles mm -hmm. and uh, The Iron Giant. But he said, and I'm paraphrasing, um, ideas don't really come from a place, and so they can't really run out. They come from a state of mind. They come from your environment. So if if you find yourself out of ideas, the best thing you can do is change your environment because something there is 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 what's not working. It's it's your surroundings. I was listening to NPR not too long ago, and they they talked specifically about there's a producer for bands. They would come in when bands had, you know, hit kind of a plateau. Mm -hmm. And like, so for Aerosmith, they would come in and like, and his whole job was to disrupt everything that they did normally. Mm -hmm. and, and like really, like apparently the bands hated this producer mm -hmm. because they were, he was gonna make their life living hell mm -hmm. for whatever album they were making. But it's like catalog that this producer like produced some of the best music from these bands, you know, over his career. Because he was just, like really rattling their cage and getting them out of that, that same environment that they've been mm. in for a long time. Yeah, I mean, stress is absolutely a motivator. It, it can help you think of things in different ways. Like, you know, you can't make diamonds without pressure. <laughs> it's, it's that, that sure. whole thing. Oh man, we can bust out all the cliche sayings now, right, <laughs> can't we? I know. Uh, but it is funny, I mean, we, we create things too, and it's, it is funny, it's really hard to get out of your head sometimes. Mm. Uh, especially when you apply all these like everyday mundane pressures, you know, right. like timelines and bills and financials, and then you're like, Ah, uh, and you're focusing on all the wrong things. It's not the project or right. whatever's the core. You have to take a step back sometimes. Like, yeah. Because even when things seem like they're going really well, like that's when you can get too comfortable and let the quality slide. Like, you always have to be on your feet. You always have to be thinking about the next thing. What's well, some of the things that you're you're excited about coming down the road? I mean, so you've you've, you've accomplished a lot with your web comics and your games and and your show. And I mean, you've checked a lot of boxes that people would be excited to do in their lifetime. What are some things that you've got on the horizon that you can talk about? I know you got some secret projects. Oh, we have one secret project in particular. Woo! <laughs> um, Plug. Oh yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye out. Run the ad, Brian. <laughs> Welcome to Trial by Trolley. <laughs>
People will die. Uh, currently, um, we just started releasing a, a brand new show. It's our first new IP since we started Sun Night and Happiness. It's called Purgatory. It's about a bureaucrat who works in purgatory and he processes people into heaven and hell. Um, we just started launching uh, our, the episodes on our YouTube channel. Okay. Um, there's eight episodes total and we're pretty excited about that. We don't know where it's going to go, but it's a thing. We made it. We have to check <laughs> so that out. Check I haven't out. checked that out, so I got to check that out. Yeah. And we're working on a, a point and click adventure game that's going to come okay. out uh, sometime in the future. I can't officially announce a date yet, but it's pretty fun. And then, of course, we're making a brand new card game, our second card game with a little company called Skybound. I've never heard of them. <laughs> they're, they're new here. Yeah, yeah, they're all right. I like those guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty but excited about that. It's it's a game of ethical choices and lots of strain murder. So I'm pretty. There's pretty there's there's some <laughs> accidental deaths. So well, accidental on purpose. Uh, who can say? Yeah, who can say? It's a it's a moral dilemma. <laughs> right. I appreciate you coming in. This has mm -hmm. been awesome. Where can people find your work? Keep up with you and follow along. You can find our website at explosum.net. You can also find everything we do just by Googling Sign Night and Happiness. You can find our YouTube channel and Instagram. We're all, all over the place. And um, you can find Joking Hazard in stores. Amazon, Target, Barnes & Noble, GameStop. It's just wherever you find games, you can go look at it. What's your, what's your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Rob Denblaker. That's just my name. Good luck spelling <laughs> no, that. No we'll put something. it on the screen. Yeah, put it on the screen like right, right there. Or <laughs> maybe there. I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for coming in. Oh, thanks for having me. This has been awesome. It's I love this is like talking my jam, but how about we? I challenge you to a match of Boggle. You're on. Let's do it. Let's go. If today's word game Boggle piqued your interest, check out the link below to grab your family a copy. And make sure to keep coming back to Gamma Ray for more episodes of Starting Roll.